the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the IP camera is plugged into the same network as the computer that you're going to be setting it up from. Uh, some of you will be installing an IP camera locally, meaning that it's in, this, in the same location as your DVR server. Uh, but most of you will probably be installing the IP camera at a remote location. So keep in mind, in order to set that IP camera up, you have to have you have to have a computer available that's running Windows XP or Windows 2000 or w Windows Vista. Um, any of those will suffice. 32-bit. Um, they have they all have to be 32-bit versions, by the way. But you have to make sure that you have an available computer on the same network as the IP camera to set it up. So make sure that before you start any of this process we're going to be discussing that you do have the camera uh, powered up and connected to your network with an ethernet cable once you've done that you need to install version 6.37 of our DVR software on the computer that you're going to be setting the IP camera up from if you don't have a copy of that on hand you can go to edigitaldeals.com click the downloads link at the top and you'll see uh, you'll, you'll see all of the available D1 software downloads the one you want is gonna it's gonna have V637-6 I'm sorry uh, V637-737 in the title uh, once you've downloaded that and installed the software uh, you you need to go to start all programs DVR server and then you want to choose install when P cap and when the next window comes up you just click next next I agree then finish then you need to go back to start all programs DVR server and then you want to choose NV series IPC scan this is a piece of software that scans your your local network for any IP cameras that you've connected and we already we already discussed that you should have already uh, connected the IP camera to the same network that the computer is on so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that then you click enter and the IP camera that I connected a few minutes ago is showing up here it's it's pink in color and it's gonna show the camera with a local IP address and a port number. Um, what you need to keep in mind here is that if you if you have one static IP address from your ISP, uh, that, st that static IP address can allow access to multiple items on your network using that one address as long as each as long as each item is associated with a different port that you forwarded on your router. For instance, if your computer is at the static IP address, but you have it associated with port 7000, uh, a person would be able to access that server by typing in your public IP address, a colon, and then 7000. And then when they try to log into that server from a remote location, your router will take that static IP address and then forward the the end user to the DVR server via port 7000. Um, you can do the same thing with your IP camera. So let's say let's say you your IP camera is connected to the same network as as the computer that we were just talking about. You can set up your router so that port 8000 forwards to the IP camera. And that's, an, that's something that we can't really get into. You'll have to follow, you'll have to look at the manual for your router to see how to set that up. But um, that is necessary so that you'll be able to access the camera from a remote location. Uh, by default, uh, that port is going to be 8000. Uh, depending on what you, depending on your router and any other configurations you may have already set up, you can change that number to your liking. But what you also need to keep in mind is that on your router, uh, your router can assign IP addresses 
to items on your network. And what happens, what can happen is your, your IP address can change. Uh, your, your router has what's called a dynamic port range. Uh, to be safe, you probably want to assign an IP address to your camera that is outside of the dynamic port range so that the IP address of the camera doesn't change. Any, any IP address within the dynamic port range, uh, those numbers can change. And that means that uh, if your camera powers down or if there's a power outage or your, your router, you restart your router, um, your camera can end up with a different IP address if its IP address is within the dynamic port range. So that's something you wanna be aware of. Um, Every router is different, so again, you'll have to refer to, to the manual for your router to determine what your dynamic port range is so that you can enter a number, if you like, enter a number for the IP address on the camera that's different uh, from, from any of the numbers within the dynamic port range. Um, the dynamic port range on our router begins with a number that ends in 2 and ends in 77. So that's why this number here for our camera's IP address uh, ends in uh, 150. That's outside of that range. And uh, if, if, if you want to make that change, you simply click the, the camera here. It'll highlight in blue. Click Modify, and then you can adjust the IP address here. By default, the username and password for this camera is going to be admin, all lowercase, and the password is going to be 12345. Uh, and actually, the username is always going to be admin. So you, you can go in and change the password if you like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select the camera here. It's going to, the highlighted color is going to change to blue. I'm going to click modify, and I can go ahead and give it a password. I'm just going to use the the default one two three four five, and click save. It'll say save successfully. Click OK, and then I can close out of that. And finally, I'm going to show you how to log into the IP camera really quickly uh, from a remote location. The first thing you need to do is launch Internet Explorer. Uh, because the IP camera requires an ActiveX control for you to view it remotely, you need to enable all of, all of your ActiveX controls. So you do that by going to Tools, Internet Options, click the Security tab, then click Custom Level. And you want to scroll down until you start, you see the heading that says ActiveX Controls and Plugins. And you want to make sure that every one of those every one of those headings is set to enable you want to make sure all of them are set to enable and then go ahead and click OK click apply then OK again and you should be all set at this point you just need to enter the IP address of the camera and you should get this login screen if you don't get this login screen, you may need to clean your ActiveX control. And the way that you do that is going to be uh, outlined in a file that you can obtain from our website. It's going to be at edigitaldeals.com slash ipcamera.pdf. That's only if you don't get this screen here. If you get a little red X up here after you've enabled all of your ActiveX controls and you still don't get this login screen just get a little red red a little box with a red X in it uh, you'll need to refer to that document it explains how to fix that problem um, lastly you just enter your password click OK and there it is uh, now we're seeing the live footage from the IP camera uh, over the internet at a, from a remote location. Uh, for detailed information on all of these controls, uh, you can refer to the manual that came with your camera.